Good morning, everyone. I've been meaning to do this for some time now. We got our buddy over here, Therapy Bunny Charlie. Look at that. And we are going to have a pretty interesting and kind of sad story. Um, so stay tuned for what we have for you today. I've been meaning to do this for some time, but today I got the chance uh, to share this with you. So let's see if he's going to... If he's going to come out here for us. Hey, buddy. Hi. Look at him. Hi. Um, so we'll give him some time to come out. And meanwhile, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened with Charlie. So some time ago, um, it, was about, it was about a week ago or so, I noticed that Charlie wasn't eating. I gave him food and he wasn't eating. Um, so I gave him a day. I said, you know, let's see what happens. Um, the next day I woke up. I was I came down to feed him and I see that his food is still in his in his cage and he hasn't touched it. And it was very alarming to me and I didn't understand what was going on. So I quickly called the vet and I said, hey, I have a bunny. He's a mini Rex bunny. Um, before I start, I just want to give you a little background. Uh, my name is Avi. I'm a, I'm a psychotherapist. And part of what I do is, you know, I work with kids, with families, with teens, with adults. And part of the therapy that I do is working with animals, animals that I, and that I have in my office. I have dogs and cats and birds and tarantulas and a whole bunch of different animals. And um, these are just one of the tools I use to be able to connect with, with humans. Um, it's a very comforting type of feeling when you're talking about the most stressful things in your life and being able to touch an animal or feed an animal. A lot of times there's, you know, there's scientific evidence to, to show that kids that were neglected or abused and when they feed an animal, it's a very nurturing type of activity. Um, so it, it very much helps them deal with the trauma that they may have experienced in their life. So this is something that I do and I've been doing this for a number of years now. And and I find it to be very, very helpful. And for those of you of you guys who've been following me for some time, have seen so many of my videos and, and commented and shared and, and liked. And if you see me in the street, you always say something nice, whether you, you enjoy the videos and they're uplifting. But what I want to what I wanted to share with you today is that sometimes you know we feel like the grass is greener on the other side and that you know oh it's such a cute thing to have it's so cool to have you know so many animals your life must be awesome and it must be so much fun and exciting and it is it is very exciting but at the same time you know every uh, every coin has two sides to it right and today i'm going to share some of the things that are not the the greatest and not the, the um, some things that i'm not the proudest of and uh actually it's pretty sad so starting off with with Charlie last week when I started off the story just to kind of give you a, a backstory Charlie is a therapy bunny who's been working with a lot of kids he's been working with seniors in nursing homes and even hospitals and he's been an amazing bunny he is an amazing bunny he's about five years old um he gets along with all the other animals that I have I have dogs and cats and parrots and he gets along with everybody he's so so friendly um, and as you can see right now, he's so gentle and so calm. So what happened was, like I started off, I was saying that um, I, I gave him food and he's usually, he's, he has a big appetite. He loves to eat. I give him the food. He goes for it right away. He has a scheduled time that he eats. He eats some hay and some dry pellets also. And uh, very quite often, he, whenever, you know, whenever everybody's, uh, when I, anytime anyone comes to, to play with him, they're the ones who give him like a banana or an apple, uh, a carrot as a treat. And when I gave him his food in the morning, he didn't touch it. And that was very interesting. I, I wasn't alarmed yet, but I was definitely keeping an eye on it. And for those of you guys who are pet owners, just to be also just a, you know, a, a tip. Whenever, you, anytime you see something strange, to always just keep an eye on it and don't let it slide. So I kept an eye on it that he didn't touch his food. I waited some time. The next day, he didn't touch it as well. Uh, and then I called the vet and the vet said, you know, bring him in immediately. So I brought him in and we drove about an hour and I called so many different veterinarians and none of them were available. They all said, oh, we might have something in a week from now, in five days from now, and no one was able to see him that moment. So we had to drive to an emergency room about an hour away, um, a specialist who deals with, with bunnies. 
and they tested him. We were in the parking lot because it was curbside because of uh, COVID. We were in the parking lot for about five hours while he was in the in the emergency room being tested. And they told us that he might have a GI problem. Um, he's not able to to process the food. He's not. He hasn't been eating. Uh, he also might have been dehydrated. So they told us that we have to start uh, giving him medication uh, to help him um, digest the food. He hasn't really pooped, so that's a, that's a, that's a big problem. So they gave him medication um, to be able to to deal with that. Uh, and I asked them, I said, what is, what, you know, what, what, what's the cause of this? He really, he has a good life. He eats a good diet. Um, you know, he's well socialized. He's so friendly. He has a good life. And he said, it's not, they're not really, they're, there's no real answer as to why. Oh, wow. Look at him. Look at him shedding. Um, there's no reason. There's no specific reason as to why this is happening. It can be from so many different things. Um, so this is what our life has been looking like these past uh, couple of days, I would say almost a week. So now I actually have to feed him, um, I have to feed him power, powdered food, and I actually have to make it for him every single day. Um, I have to feed him, this is his food, which he usually eats hay, but this actually, I'm going to be feeding him, um, I feed him this through a syringe four times a day. Um, in the beginning, it was pretty tough. He was, you know, he was uncomfortable with it because, you know, generally when bunnies, bunnies are not like cats or dogs. Um, so here I have some of the food and here I'm going to put in just a little bit of water to make it like a pancake type of um, consistency. And I'm going to just mix that up. You ready to eat, buddy? Hey, you ready to eat? So I'm going to mix it up like that. And um, we're going to have to feed him through a syringe. He is a little bit uncomfortable. He does try to escape. But he, I mean, he likes to eat. He has gotten a lot better. Um, but this is what we have to do for him. And we also have to give him the medication um, through through a syringe now. Because um, because he's not, he doesn't, he's not eating his food. Um, I hope that this is going to be over very soon. But we're not sure. And they, the, the hospital staff don't even know um what to what to tell me so this is the the syringe it's a little bit sticky because i put the medication here yesterday so sometimes stay buddy there you go one second all right so he's gonna be getting ready to eat and i have like a white a white cloth here that i feed him on so what I like to do is obviously very gently try to, to open up his mouth. Let's see if we can do it here for you guys. Ready? Easy, buddy. Easy. That's okay. Easy. And just give a little bit at a time so he can eat. Um, obviously, this has to be done multiple times a day. Four times a day, to be exact. Uh, so this is his food. We also have to give him his medication. And, you know, when we were talking about, you know, this being kind of the dark side of owning pets, you know, when we think about animals, especially rabbits, you know, people, I got him, I got him for like $50 or like $75 uh, from a breeder, which is pretty inexpensive. But the bill that we paid was close to $500. Um, just for his his medical expense, just for the emergency room visit, uh, the emergency room visit was like somewhere like one hundred fifty dollars or something, and then uh, the medication one medication was like seventy five dollars, another medication was like sixty five dollars, another medication was like thirty five dollars. So easy. So we we were giving him so many different medications and different types of food. Um, for him to be able to eat uh, in, a, in a safe way and uh, this way he's, he's nurtured properly. So sometimes, even with dogs, a lot of my clients, um, you know, see the animals like, oh, you know, maybe we should get a bunny or maybe we should get a dog or maybe we should get an animal. Yes, animals are incredible and it's the best thing. I feel like, you know, they're your real best friends. Um, but also it comes with a price to pay and sometimes you know some days especially you know like for example with dogs um a lot of times with with training it, that takes a lot of time a lot of times people will ask um how how much uh, how much time does it take to train a dog and how much money does it take it's definitely a very very big investment 
Um, but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of patience, um, especially, for example, when getting a dog. I know we're dealing with a bunny here now, but when getting a dog, you know, it, sometimes I'll tell people it can take up to two years to really build that strong bond where they understand you and you understand them. And it's not, it's really not a simple thing. Um, my suggestion is, my suggestion is don't give up. If you want, if you got an animal and you want to make it work, it takes time and it takes time and patience. And here you go, buddy. I noticed that when I close his eyes, he's a lot more calmer and he, he eats better. Are you okay? He's such a good bunny. He's such a good boy, but you know, it's really sad. It's really sad to see him this way, not be able to eat. And for those of you guys who lost who lost animals, the animals that passed away, I can't even imagine what you what you went through. I can imagine it's you know it's it's a really difficult moment for you. Um, so if you were thinking about getting a new animal, it's it's a great thing for sure. But also just to know that sometimes you do have you do have the days where they get sick. And you may have to take them to the vet and you may have to treat them and they, you might have to, you know, take time off from work and you may have to easy, easy, but it's okay. You may have to take time off work and, you know, because these, you are their protectors, you know, so, so you have to make sure that they're doing well and, you know, you have to make sure that they're not neglected. Uh, that's a very, very important thing. Um, they require, they do require a lot of care and a lot of, uh, a lot of time. Uh, that's very important. I noticed some some of you uh, are writing a comment. You said people don't understand they need a lot of money and patience when owning a pet. It's sad how many get an animal and realize that after they go and return them. Yeah, so we just got a comment. Uh, we're doing this uh, live. So we just got a comment that, yes, it's so unfortunate that people buy animals thinking it's going to be a fun gift for a holiday or for a birthday and don't realize how much work it is. Actually... A lot of times parents get it because they may have like a, you know, easy, a 10-year-old child or, you know, a 8-year-old child who wants an animal um, and they're begging them for to getting the animal or for getting the animal and the parents actually get them the animal and then a week later decide like, what the heck did we do? We made the biggest mistake not realizing that when they get the animal, it's actually the parent's responsibility, full responsibility. The kids can assist, but it's the parents' full responsibility. I always say, especially for families who have children already, I say, are you ready for another child? Because having an, uh, uh, an animal is really like having a child. If you want to go somewhere on vacation, you have to make adjustments, and that can be a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Uh, for example, for myself, I have three dogs, I have parrots, I have bunnies, I have tarantulas, I have a cat. So every time I leave somewhere, I have to make sure they're in the right hands and I'm making sure that they're going to get the right exercise and making sure they're going to get the right food. Um, and it, it can really cause a lot of trauma just from one simple mistake, leaving them by, uh, you know, in the, in the wrong uh, care for about a week. That can really traumatize dogs. I spoke to many people or any animal. I spoke to many people about this and they said, yeah, you know, one time we left it at a, at a, um, like a boarding place and my dog was never the same or it took months and months for my dog to bounce back and be his usual self. Or a lot of times, um, animals will like, for example, they will stop eating or they're going to start learning negative, other negative behaviors. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of investment. Easy. It's okay. It's a lot of time to be able to invest in them. Um, it says, yeah, I got my 11-year-old son, a puppy, five months ago. I take care of him 96%, 4% he does. I love that. Good job for, for doing that. Yes, I, and I agree. I like the, the ratio. We just got another comment that the parent takes care of it 96% and the child takes care of it 4%. I do think having animals can definitely teach kids responsibility. That's for sure. Easy. Okay. Um... You know, but the main responsibility is for the parents, and it's it's a it is depending on what animal you get. It is a long term investment. You know, bunnies they can live uh, you know six to ten, eleven years, uh, and and parrots can live you know fifty to seventy years. Dogs you know can live ten to fifteen years. You know, so it really depends on. It depends on what type of animal you want. Now we're going to be giving some medication to um, to Charlie. 
Um, and I don't even know what the future is going to hold. I don't know what's going to be with him. And, uh, you know, especially with the expense, I was talking to the vet and, and she said that it might be, uh, you know, lifelong, uh, that he's going to have to be on medication and then I, I might have to syringe feed him. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's kind of stressful, you know, it, it is definitely stressful to be able to, to think about these type of things because, uh, because when we get an animal, we only look at the bright side that, oh, it's going to be so fun and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be able to play with it and coddle it and, you know, have such a good time with it. And it's true. They are the best. They are so funny and they're so, you know, full of life and full of character. And, you know, it's, it's just they're amazing. But also it comes with a price. There are some days when they're sick and we have to take care of them and it can be very stressful and definitely very, very, very expensive. And, um, you know, you don't really have, okay, ready, easy. Um, you don't have much time to think about it or whether you have, you can pay for it or not, because sometimes a certain uh, procedure needs immediate attention and you have to make a decision. And the decision is, is really sometimes between life and death. So somebody asked uh, in the comments, what's wrong with him? He wasn't eating and um, we noticed and we took him to the emergency room and he was, we found out that he has a, a GI problem. He's not able to process any food. So now we have to syringe feed him and give him medication to get things passing in his body. We're not sure, easy. We're not sure really what he ate. He was He's always watched. He's in a safe crate whenever we're not watching him. And he has like a, a really big, beautiful rabbit hutch. Um, so we're actually going to give him another medication now. To uh, This one is, it's called Cisapride. It's, um, it's um, to be able to, you know, kind of move things around his stomach. Um, so this is, all right, buddy, we're going soon. Um, so this is kind of what's been going on. Uh, so just wanted to be able to share some awareness and you know, I've been thinking about this for some time now uh, Whether I should share this or not, but I want to just kind of you know Show you both sides of what it's like to have animals because I I make a lot of videos a lot of fun videos about um, About animals and how cute they are and how friendly they are, you know with some cool music in the background You know you get like that one minute uh, Look on you know when when you know I work with the animals but you don't, many of you don't really see what goes on behind the scenes. And a lot of these guys, they have to go to the vet and they have to have their medication and they have to be, you know, properly exercised. And there's, there's so much that's involved in their plan um, of care. Hang on a second. Let's see if this is good. A little bit more. Um... So there's, there is so much involved, so I kind of wanted to bring you along with this journey with me today and just to show you that, yes, it's, it can be an amazing thing to have an animal, but also requires a lot of care um, and attention. That's really what it is. So if you are thinking of getting an animal, hang on a second, easy, buddy, easy. Good boy. Um, if you are thinking about getting an animal, please, please, I ask, do your homework, do your research speak to people and and the main thing is know that you are going to have to give a lot of time and patience that's the main takeaway when owning an animal patience is your best friend you have to give it time to be able to connect and bond with the animal don't give up too quickly there are so many people that buy dogs and it takes about a year i would say to really build a bond sometimes or any type of animal Sometimes, you know, they have to understand how your schedule works and you have to understand how their schedule works. So that takes time. It says, not sure when you, when you live, there's doctor in Australia Street who takes the um, holistic approach going. So somebody was talking about holistic approach, uh, which, which I actually love. It actually did help a lot that he was, he was on a, on a pretty good diet. Um, that's another thing. A lot of times people feed like table food to their animals, um, but sticking to a good, healthy diet, giving them proper exercise, that is really the most, the most important. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. And my message for you today um, is just really before getting an animal is to please consider all the factors. We never know what can come up. He came from a healthy breeder. He had a pretty healthy lifestyle. 
Um, we took really, really good care of him. Um, but but uh, this is this is what happened. So this is something that I just want you to 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 be mindful of uh, when getting an animal. Uh, thank you guys so much for for tuning in and stay tuned for the journey uh, with Charlie. All right, guys. Bye, everybody. See you. Bye. -bye. <laughs>